Hi, I'm Jane from Poppy Patchwork and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a 9 inch diamond square quilt block. You can use this quilt block to make a quilt and here are three different options. The first one is the quilt block repeated. The second one is the same quilt block but with sashings and corner stones. And the third option is the quilt block placed on point. I've drawn the block out in my quilt block notebook so that I know the sizes of fabric that I need to cut. So for this block, you're going to need in background fabric one four and three quarter inch square and four two and three quarter inch squares and eight two inch squares. In fabric A, you're going to need six two inch squares. In fabric B, you're going to need to use six two inch squares. And in fabric C, you're going to need one four and three quarter inch square and four two and three quarter inch squares. So this block is made up of four patches in the corner and then flying geese in the center corners. And then right in the middle, we've got another four patch. We're going to start by making the four patches and that uses the two inch squares. So I'll move the other ones to one side and now we're going to join these two inch squares together. So in the centre we've got A's sewn to B's, two of them. And then the others are sewn to the background fabrics. So I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and sew with the quarter inch seam. So I'm going to set the seams and press them towards the darker fabric. And now we're going to sew these into four patches. So they're going to have the same fabrics making up the four patch. So because they've been pressed towards the darker fabric, you should be able to nest these seams together. Now 
and then the centerfold patch um, are the fabrics that aren't the background fabrics. So I'm going to take those over to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. seams and then press them open. So I'm going to set these to one side. So now we're going to make the flying geese. So for this we need to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the small fabric squares. And so with right sides together and opposite fabrics, I'm going to place the background square in the corner of this fabric here. I'm going to pin it in place. Then I'm going to place another square in the opposite corner and pin that in place. Now, the line that you just drew needs to run corner to corner. I'm going to repeat that with the background, the large background square and the small coloured squares. So I'm going to take those over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch on both sides of the drawn line. I'm going to remove the pins and then cut along that drawn line. going to press the seams. So I'm going to set the seam and then press towards the small triangles. Now I'm going to place another square in the corner and this time the line that you've drawn needs to come through from here down to here. That's the wrong one, we need this coloured one here. So I'm going to take those back over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam on both sides of the drawn line. I'm going to 
remove the pins and cut along the drawn line. Now I'm going to press the seams. So I'm going to set the seams and press towards the small triangle. And now we need to trim them. So the flying geese need to be trimmed to two by three and a half inches so that when they're sewn into the block they'll be one and a half by three inches. So I like to use this Ultimate Flying Geese Tool by Deb Heatherly for Creative Grids. But if you don't have one of these, if you right mouse click on the link above, it will take you to my video on how to trim flying geese with a standard quilting ruler. So I'm going to use this tool and we're going to trim to markings C. So the first thing you need to do is trim number one which is, and you have to line up the apex, the point of the flying geese with the point on the ruler, the point of the lines on the ruler and then you need to trim along one side and along the top. And then you need to rotate the piece and rotate the ruler and do trim number two. So again, lining the markings for the C cut. We cut up and across. So I'm going to continue to do that with all of my flying geese. Okay, so with the flying geese all trimmed, we're now ready for block layout. So I've laid all the pieces out in the block layout. And the first thing I'm going to do is join the flying geese together to make chevrons. And when I sew these on the sewing machine, I'll sew them this way up so that I can see the point. So that I don't blunt it when I sew. So I'm going to take these to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to set the seams and press them away from the point. So I'm going to return these back to block layout. So we've got the pieces laid out in an iron patch 
and now I'm going to join them together. I'm going to take those over to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. So I've laid these back out in block order. And I'm going to press the seams towards the four patches. And now I'm going to pin the pieces on the bottom of the columns. I'm going to take those to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. I'm going to press the seams towards the four patches. And then return the block to block layout. Now I'm going to pin and sew the columns together. You want to match the seams and the points. I do have a video on how to get perfect points, so if you want to right mouse click on the link above, it will take you to this video. So I'll take that to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch. I'm now going to set the seam and press it open. And now I can pin and sew the last seam. So I'll take that back to the sewing machine and sew the last seam. So once again, we're going to set the seams and press them open. Congratulations, you have made the 9 inch diamond square block.